The Core is a sci-fi disaster movie about a group of scientists that go to the center of the Earth with a bunch of nuclear bombs that will be used to restart the rotation of the Earth's core. When they first discover the problem, the technology to go to the Earth's core doesn't yet exist, so the government gathers some of the world's lead scientists to help develop the technology. Geophysicist Dr. Josh Keyes is the leader of the group and has to address the scientists to explain both what they're going to be doing and also, since the government is keeping the problem with the Earth's core a secret, Josh must also tell the group that, should they fail, everyone on Earth will die. And what does Josh do? Well, this looks like a meeting for Nobel Prize winners anonymous. He tells a joke. The Core is a 2003 movie directed by John Amiel and written by Cooper Lane and John Rogers. A friend of mine recently asked me, why don't more people love this movie? So I gave it a watch. At first I was confused. I'm used to scenes in disaster movies where scientists are called in to investigate the start of a disaster, but I'm not used to scenes like this. Did some sort of weapon kill these people? It's not a weapon that I've ever heard of. Okay, we're done. Even when I got to my friend's favorite scene. This is the Earth without the EM field. Would you? I wasn't sure what the movie was doing. Like, who is this spectacle for? Is it for the generals to help them understand the gravity of the situation? Is it to help the audience understand? Eventually, I realized the key to the film was in this scene, because the core only cares about having fun. On the DVD commentary for the film, the director, John Amiel, said, Humor is very important to all of us in this film. And, anybody can make a deadly serious film about the end of the world. It takes skill and talent to make one that has a sense of humor to it. Also, truly heroic characters always find something to laugh at, even at the darkest moments. Just as Amiel states, you can see the importance of humor in the cast too. In an interview with UrbanCinephile.com, Aaron Eckhart said, It was hard to keep a straight face, what with having to deliver lines like, as long as we can surf these magma flows, we'll be okay. Stanley Tucci and I got to manhandle some nuclear bombs. And there were times when we were laughing so hard that he almost literally went to the bathroom in his spacesuit. It was so ridiculous and we had to be so serious, but we were always very aware that what we were doing was family entertainment. It's just a movie where you can go and have fun for a while. You can also see the humor-focused approach from one of the film's writers, John Rogers. If I'm given a choice between being accurate and entertaining, entertaining is so much harder, I will, I will put that down. When a film has producers, a director, actors improvising or changing lines, time constraints changing what makes it into the movie, editing, ADR, and two writers on a script, it's hard to fully attribute ownership of a script to one writer. But in a 2001 interview with IGN, Rogers said, This is just a fun, big-budget sci-fi movie written by a sci-fi fan with a science degree, speaking about himself. So I'm going to focus on Rogers and more or less consider him the primary writer. Looking at some of Rogers' work where he was the principal writer, you can see his propensity toward comedy. I can take these cops. Don't you dare, you kill anyone, you screw up my getaway. In Jackie Chan Adventures, a show he created, here's a scene from the first episode that he wrote. I'm sorry, but this location must remain secret. Oh, yes! I can see this is some very special garbage! John Rogers has a history with stand-up. He attended McGill University in Montreal, Canada, and did a lot of stand-up while he was there, going on to perform at places like the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. This is probably in part why every chance the core gets to add a joke, or make light of the situation, it does. No, I'll make the call. I should make the call. 65 knots! There are even places where the jokes or devil may care attitudes make some of the serious scenes, in addition to some over the top acting, extremely comical. Like when they crash into some diamonds and Josh goes, Diamonds? I want some. Can I help? And then moments later he's screaming, I was screaming for you! Why didn't you do it? Or God! No! You 
damn it, you leave God out of this! <laughs> I'm never gonna not find that funny. The Core is supposedly based on a movie from the year 2000 called Deep Core, starring Craig Sheffer and Terry Farrell from Deep Space Nine. It also has Will Wheaton. What is that, the mothership? The plots of the films are somewhat similar in that they both involve a team of individuals drilling into the Earth and dropping nukes to correct a problem, but the tone of the movies are completely different. While some characters in both films don't take anything seriously, This oh. is my Kung Fu, and it is strong. Alright Rodney, you're up. Hey, you got a please for me? The main characters in Deep Core are mostly serious. The lead scientist in Deep Core, Dr. Goodman, doesn't joke about the world's predicament. Congratulations, you just triggered global destabilization. And the characters' reactions in Deep Core to their problems are more serious and less intense. We lost Rodney. It's almost like the core is a circus and Deep Core is a traditional magic show. I don't have time for your magic tricks. Illusions, Dad. You don't have time for my illusions. What is wrong with you? There's nothing remarkable or surprising about Deep Core, whereas the core is so ostentatious that, despite its flaws, it's memorable. Guys, you don't have to be here. I want you back inside. Well, I think that means me. Despite both films having similar plots, each owes more to the disaster genre than they do to each other. He believes that an atomic blast at this depth now runs the risk of doing this to the Earth. While disaster movies debatably go back into the early 1900s with the silent movie Fire, it's better to look at the disaster movies from the 70s to see what elements the core borrows and learns from. Disaster movies were very popular in the 70s, a trend which started around 1970 with the film Airport. There were more than 20 disaster movies in the 70s, some of which were quite successful, your own words, let's move it. and others that were not. The disaster movie formula typically goes like this. Disaster is discovered, team is united, disaster kills some people, disaster is averted. Movies like Meteor and The Swarm both follow this structure, but like The Core and Deep Core, Meteor and The Swarm are very different in their executions. Both films take their respective disasters very seriously, with stodgy scenes with scientists, but they differ in their subject matter. Meteor is about a large meteor coming to Earth, whereas The Swarm is about a mutated swarm of killer bees. Oh my god, bees, bees, millions of bees! Air search 2-8 to base! Bees, millions of bees! Bees? Yes, they're all around me now, all over the canopy, trying to get in. Well, get above them, man, take it up! Ah, I can't, sir, I am losing power! The Swarm doesn't know it's hilarious and plays itself entirely seriously. When it gets hammy and ridiculous and then becomes serious again, it's almost sad. Because it killed my family! The Core takes a lesson from this and instead makes jokes throughout. What would it take to get it done in three months? Fifty billion dollars! <laughs> Will you take a check? Why don't you use a credit card to get miles? which makes the film a little easier to enjoy, knowing it's self-aware. It's also important to remember that the core is more interested in being entertaining and having fun than it is in making sense. That's a tough bridge for viewers to cross sometimes. When a viewer is no longer able to suspend their disbelief, they are no longer able to invest themselves in the illusion of the story. And the core, at times, makes that very difficult. So, we hotwire the nukes, yes. as one does. Watching The Core, I recall the lesson I learned about movies while watching The Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. At the climax of Tokyo Drift, Sean makes a deal with the Tokyo mob boss. We race. And the loser leaves town for good. I remember getting angry at the movie when he said that. Why would a Tokyo mob boss agree to such ridiculous terms? Why not just kill Sean? And then I realized, I want this movie to end in a race and I don't care how it gets there. After that, certain movies became easier to accept, and The Core is one of them. Some of the things that don't make sense in The Core might be attributed to writer John Rogers' sensibilities. 
In an episode of the TV show Leverage that he created, Rogers seemingly gives a self-aware nod to the fact that the episode's resolution doesn't quite make sense. In this episode, an injured soldier is looking for compensation for his rehab from a shady private military contractor whose mercenaries were responsible for his injuries. The Leverage team end up acquiring this truck full of money that the military contractor had hidden away, which is filled with millions of dollars of stolen government money meant for the reconstitution of Iraq. The Leverage team then take the truck of money and give it to the hospital taking care of the wounded soldier. Wait, what? How is this hospital going to use this gigantic pile of money without attracting attention from the government? Are they going to launder it? Where are they going to keep it safe so that it doesn't get stolen? Look at all these people that know about that money. Like this guy. Do you trust this guy? The doctor receiving the money says, The world doesn't work this way. And then the title character, Nathan Ford, says, So change the world. Which is almost like Roger's way of winking at the camera and saying, I know the world doesn't work this way, but isn't it nice? And there's plenty of things in the core that either don't make sense or are so plainly wrong that it may bother some viewers. For example, despite Roger's protests stating the validity of a lot of the science in the film, over the years a number of scientists have had a myriad of problems with the film. Earth's atmosphere wouldn't disappear within a year after the core stops rotating. A small EMP device cannot stop the core's rotation no more than a fan can dissolve a thunderstorm. Birds can also migrate without the Earth's Sending magnetic field. The Earth's core to the surface might be impossible since the signal would Earth's magnetic field dissipating wouldn't cause solar microwave radiation strong enough to melt the Golden Gate Bridge. The rest of people can't walk around a few minutes in 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit. No ship can convert heat easily into energy. There is no space between two clear points. Just don't worry about that stuff. Simply think of all of it as devices that are used to either create conflict. Not going to work without oxygen. We're losing oxygen. Or entertainment. Why? You want to be a hero? You want to be a martyr? What do you want to be? You're out of your mind. Thank you. You could get worked up and be angry about how nonsensical the core is, but all the film wants to do is lean over, gently nudge you in the ribs, and whisper, "Hey, I'm just kidding around." Yes, 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 yes. And what if the core is made of cheese? One of my favorite film writers, Film Crit Hulk, once wrote about his experience with Quentin Tarantino. Tarantino told him, Hating movies closes you off to stuff that seems like whatever you hate. Or stuff by the same guy. And who knows? That other stuff could be awesome. Some of my favorite filmmakers made bad movies. It won't help you. It just won't. It stops your development right in its tracks, okay? I'm just saying I think it's better for you and it makes me way, way happier. Never hate a movie. They're gifts. Every one of them. Now I'm not saying you have to like every movie, or even that you have to like the core. That's for each person to decide for themselves. If you do, I promise that no one on this plane will hurt you. But as silly as the core might seem, maybe consider opening your heart to it, or movies like it. You might just be surprised at what you come to love. Chances. Maybe he wants the apple. Oh man, give it to him. 